my mum tells me that when I was a kid we had glowworms in our garden. And I've always just been interested in these creatures that glow, like how do they do it and what do they do it for? I was that kid who had glowing stars on my ceiling. How do I feel about the process of discovery? Well, it's exciting, right? Finding out stuff that nobody else knows, that's sort of an amazing thing, really. You never know where that process of discovery is gonna take you and then where it's gonna take somebody else when they build on what you've done. What we do in my lab is we take the chemical reaction that glowing creatures use and we repurpose it to try and find new medicines. Scientists many years ago discovered the genes that glowing creatures use to make these chemicals to make light. And so we and many others have taken those genes and put them into other microbes. So we put them into nasty superbugs and we make them glow in the dark. And the idea is that they'll only glow when they're alive. So we can basically use that to try and find things that kill them. So if the bacteria are killed, the lights will go out. All around the world, microbes are becoming more resistant to antibiotics and this is making them more difficult to treat. There is going to come a day where there's no antibiotics left to use. Antibiotic resistance is a bit like global warming or other slowly developing environmental catastrophes. Over the next 20 or 30 years, it may well lead to a very unfortunate result where we won't have the same ability to treat infections as we have now. And if we continue with the high levels of antibiotic use that we have at the moment, we will inevitably, over the next decade or so, have high levels of antibiotic resistance that will be bad for the health of our children and grandchildren. Now this doesn't just mean that common infections will be untreatable. It also means things like surgery and chemotherapy for cancer become really life-threateningly risky. It'll be like turning back the clock 100 years. The big benefit about using bioluminescence is the speed of it. If we wanted to know how many bacteria we had in a sample, we would incubate them and wait for them to grow. Some bacteria, like the one that causes TB, can take weeks and weeks. But by measuring light, we don't have to do that at all. We can just put it in a machine, press a button and say, tell me how much light there is. The thing I'm most excited about at the moment is a collaboration we have with Landcare Research. They have been collecting fungi for the last 50 years and have about 10,000 of them, um, fungi from all over New Zealand and the South Pacific. So the reason fungi are exciting is because the first antibiotic that was discovered, penicillin, comes from a fungus. And we're trying to see if any of them produce new antibiotics. Painting with glowing bacteria is like working with invisible ink. You can't see what you're doing, you can't see where you've written, but wherever I put the bacteria, that's where they should grow, and wherever they grow is where they will glow. I had no idea that I would have been able to make a career out of the two things I'm really passionate about, creatures that glow in the dark and nasty superbugs. I come into the lab and I can swirl my flask of glowing bacteria and just see that glow and it kind of makes it all worthwhile. It's like everything's going to be fine. We'll survive. We'll find some new medicines.